form next 2023 and free form injection molding. I'm at the Nexa booth with my friend Lassa. Hey there, Joel. How it's you amazing. doing, man? I, I know additive, I know some subtractive, but injection molding is still a process that I haven't really got my hands dirty on. So I'm hoping you can take me through the process of what free form injection molding is. I'd love to, Joel. What we try to do here is to use standard off-the-shelf machinery and materials. This is not an Exa machine, this is no. a... This is a standard off-the-shelf Dr. Boy injection mold machine. It okay. has six-ton clamping for us, it does 400 degrees centigrade, blah, blah, blah. The key thing to remember is injection molders have a lot of sexy materials that we don't have an additive. The thing we want to achieve here is to basically make all those sexy materials available on an additive platform. So, okay, uh, how, how do you do that? We're not the only company in the world 3D printing injection molding tools, but we've tried to make sure that you can retain the design freedom. We've tried to make sure you can access the entire range of materials. And in order to do that, we have created a material platform that combines high thermal stability with solubility. Okay, yeah. so wait, this is, it's a dissolvable tool. It's a dissolvable tool. And that is about the most counterintuitive thing you can think about. I was just going to say. You, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it absolutely does not make sense. Well, typically, like traditionally, yeah. someone cuts a tool out of a metal yep. and pays thousands of dollars typically to have it happen. Yes. And they hope and pray it lasts for as long as possible. Yep. And you just told me you have a tool that dissolves. So if we start with the part, this little impeller here is made in PPS. It's a taterer from Mocum. It's a 40% glass filled material. You cannot 3D print. No, right. no, no, no. can do. No. This part will either require that $20,000 metal tool because those little veins there require sliders that need to be pulled out, high precision, high strength steel, all that stuff. And the problem is no injection molding company wants to start cutting these tools until they are absolutely sure they can sell a lot of parts. Oh, because if you do and you have something slightly off, even just slightly yeah. off, you have to cut all new tools at an all new expense. Either that or you have to try to modify, then you get into a fight with your customer about who pays the bill for that modification. It's a mess. We've got this tool. It got a ridiculously simple A part, which you can reuse. And then it's got that B part, which represents that crazy geometry. Now, this tool takes about 10 minutes to print. That's it nothing. costs about $10 to manufacture, and this is reusable. So now we are at $6. So this <laughs> is a $6 tool that creates a part that would normally require a $20,000 tool to make. Oh, okay. And I would be waiting for that tool for at least eight weeks. Chances are my tool maker is going to run it in. He's going to find something that doesn't work, and then I have to wait another four weeks. This is not to say that injection molding is a bad technology. It's the best technology that there is for mass production. But if we could also make it compatible with the requirements of prototyping, we would have one hell of a killer application. That's the truth. I mean, just, just alone being able to take it from five figures down to what I might pay for our, you know, a happy meal at McDonald's, exactly. that's an insane proposition. It is an insane proposition. And as Glenn Mason from Worlds and Sporting Goods is usually saying, this is the one technology that is, in fact, too good to be true. People simply don't know it yet how much you can do with this stuff. I've got some samples behind us, but I think we should just jump into a slight demo. Why don't oh, we do that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so I've got my $10 tool here, or $6 tool. Normally I would use screws in these corners because I want the mold to be tight, but since we are at a trade show, and since we want things to progress more or less smoothly, I'm going to skip the screws for now. Flying by the seat of your pants, I say. Flying blind and by the seat of my pants. So I'm inserting my mold cavity into the injection mold machine. Okay. You've got this mold frame, it's brutally simple, it just basically stabilizes the tool. Right. And then what an injection mold machine does is, it heats up pelletized material, it basically just injects until the screw is empty. So I'm activating, I'm saying my little injection mold in prayer, and then I push the button. So now my $10 tool, which took me about 10 minutes to print, is getting filled. I saw the piston move ahead, which is a good sign. That is a very it good sign. It means material got squirted into the cavity. Now, one of the things that differentiates freeform injection molding from other technologies is we get the entire tool out. Let's shift the one to manual because I want to show you what happens. So I'm opening. And now my part has been filled oh, with look an injection molding. I see it. Yeah, exactly. So 
I'm taking it out and get ready for the ta -da. Because now I have turned my 3D printed mold into an ejection molded part. This is that A part that can be that reused. This is the A part which I can reuse. But the B part is now containing a part that is impossible to get out unless I want to make that $10,000 or $20,000 turn in this. Right. So I dump this into a tank. It stays there for 24 hours, 36 hours. And then I can get my part out without this blue stuff attached to it. Oh, so the blue stuff dissolves? The blue stuff dissolves. And what dissolves it? Alkaline solvent. We use sodium hydroxide, one molar. It's a pretty standard industrial solvent. We are bringing together the world of injection molding and additive manufacturing with the best from both disciplines combined on one platform. We've got the design freedom, we've got the short lead times, low startup costs, and then we've got that range of beautiful materials developed for the injection mold industry over the last 100 years at our fingertips. That dollar savings you said is, is an amazing proposition. Dollar savings, time saving, and keep in mind that every time you start cutting into metal, you're consuming a lot of energy. You're consuming a lot of very high cost, environmentally high cost material. We had an LCA analysis done, demonstrate that freeform injection molding is 75% greener than conventional pilot tooling. Oh, really? When you start working the development. Of course, once you get into the serious production, injection molding is the greenest technology there is, but for sustainable development to happen, you need to get those metal tools out of the first couple of iterations because cutting a new tool every time, <laughs> that's not only expensive and time consuming, it's also creating a lot of waste. Well, and actually that's really great that you said that because I know Formnext this year, one of the main themes is sustainability yep. and just being able to use materials better is a great idea when it comes to injection molding. It is one idea that is also at the heart of what Nexon tries to do. By the way, the material we're injection molding here is also recycled. <laughs> of course it because is. Because we can. So you had some parts over here. Did you want That's to talk true. about those for a second? Oh yes, I'd love to. If we start with a very, very exciting part. This is the epitome of what we're doing right now. It is a shrouded impeller, which is made in a recycled carbon-filled PAEK material. PAEK. -E -E yes. I know PEEK. -E exactly. And PEKK -E -K. -E is a evil twin of peak. Okay. Okay. Which means you inject it at about 308 degrees. You inject it at 800 bar. In order to enable this super intricate channel structure that you see here you would either have to reinvent the concept of injection molding because <laughs> you'd have sliders coming in here, sliders coming down here, and then you'd have sliders coming out of the sliders to create those overhangs. That, yeah. At that point, this is not an injection molding capable part, no, right? Exactly, okay. we, we, we are slightly concluding that this would not be possible. Okay. Now, this is the enabler. This $60 piece of plastic, you have to imagine that we have a metal tool frame here. And by the way, there we go. That metal tool frame contains an XP part which we printed as a support. We insert <laughs> this great little piece of soluble material. This is the X mold generation one. That's the color difference. Okay. Then we have a second part of the metal tool which we place over it. And then we eject this carbon reinforced high temperature material to cover this. And we dissolve the yellow stuff to get this crazily complex part out. Well now, this part, like you said, it has that printed part and it has the injection molded plastic or polymer around the printed part. So this is the ultimate unification of 3D printing and injection molding. We even have 3D printed parts in the injection molded part. That's it's really cool. Now, wow, these molds are heavy. I didn't realize how heavy these they are. They are heavy. Workout is guaranteed <laughs> now. We can also go to the other end of the scale and we can look at a beautiful soft material like this silicone. Is it common to injection mold silicone? It's very common to injection mold silicone, but you would usually require a very, very highly accurate tool, which is heated because you need to vulcanize the silicone while I it's see. in the mold. I see, okay. So you're talking high cost tooling, or you can do a $6 tool, inject the silicone, place it in an oven, and you would have a fully Oh, but that's right, because the tool itself is a, I don't want to say a waste product, but it is a disposable product. Exactly. It can be, a, it's a dissolvable product. It, you don't have to vulcanize the silicone inside the injection molding nope. machine. You can do it outside the machine. Exactly. Which, correct me if I'm wrong, that would aid in accelerating 
more manufacturing. You could do things faster, correct? You absolutely could because you don't have that long uh, cycle time. With heat applied to the silicone, you can accelerate the process that's by That's cool. Five. And by the way, this is fully biocompatible. The mold does not interfere with the biochemistry of the material. Ah. We had that investigated too because I have a medical device background. I find medical devices oh. to be super important. Oh, and this is one killer application. Now, when we talk about doing this before having a metal mold and heating it up to vulcanize the silicone, yeah. obviously the metal has been qualified to not interfere with the biocompatibility. Yes. And so it makes sense if you're changing the workflow a little bit and vulcanizing the silicone outside within a different material, yeah. you have to get that qualified. And, you have to get that qualified. And it is. We have customers moving through the 510K FDA medical device approval process with parts that are manufactured using freeform injection molds. That's cool, man. And we have that 10993, which is the biocompatibility standard, passed with flying colors. Oh, congratulations. We've also had a very beautiful case, which is closer to home for most cell phone users. Now, silicone ear molds, okay. one opportunity, but you can actually also do the ear molds in a TPE, which is injection molded. Yeah. Which is what EarFab one of our very nice Danish customers started doing. So they are actually exploiting the open materials profile of the Nexus 3D printer systems. To use a resin, it is not soluble, but they have found a way to design tools that are functionally equivalent for soft materials. Okay. Which means they are now injection molding ear molds with a medical grade silicone, sorry, TPE, using a machine equivalent to this one for customers all over the world in a fully digitized workflow. Now, the, these are these have to be custom because everybody's yep. ears aren't the same, exactly. right? Oh, and so this enables that, that injection molding because they're not having to cut an expensive tool for every person's ear. Exactly. Aha-ha. Uh -huh. Lasse, this is fascinating, and a lot of people out there are really going to be interested in this. Where can they go to find out more about freeform injection molding? Well, I would start visiting www.nexa3d.com where we have a beautiful case collection, plus, of course, all the information about the materials, the machines, and, well, you're always free to find me on LinkedIn. I'm usually pretty active. Well, we'll put a link down below. Oh, yeah. Well, listen, if you guys made it to this video and all the way to the end, you are awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for cause you believe in. Injection mold all the things. <laughs> yeah. And with the 3D printed tooling. With the 3D printed tooling. And as always, high five. High five.